need their breakfast too. Are you not gonna share? <laughs> oh, Willow, hi T. Willow, you're not gonna share? Merida says you will share. So we're bringing down some breakfast to the buck pen as well. Joe's getting ready to let the chickens out for me. And I've noticed somebody's flagging their tail again. Blackberry, she was just bred a couple days ago. She's flagging again. Like, she got put in on Monday and it's Saturday. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here with her or um, her cycle. So I'm not sure if she's, she doesn't seem like she's in a standing heat and like, she's not, Blue's not taking her too seriously either. So I'm not really sure. I mean, if this is any signs that she may be infertile or can't stick this season, then sounds like she can't stay. You breed her for later babies, but still. There guys, there's still the same hay over there. I'm just separating it. I separate their um, piles of hay just so that the goats that are lower on the hierarchy run can kind of move away from more dominant goats and not get pushed off the feed completely. I do the same with grain in this pen, especially because there's six does and there's a lot of different social runs in here right now. Hey lady, what's your deal? Huh? What's going on here? See, Flew's right with her, and she's got a flicking tail, see? He just... <sighs> and see, he's half-hearted right now. She's still kind of... Yeah. Now, if I remember correctly, last year she did this too. It wasn't so much that she didn't stick, she just kind of... She was already bred, confirmed bred, but she kind of went into like these teasing heats. I mean, if I let her out against the buck pen, which I did just to see like, well, are you really covered? Like, has something happened? Like she would kind of do what she's doing right now. She would kind of flick her tail and act like she might be interested, but she would never really like either let them out or they would do what Flu just did and kind of like a half-hearted, kind of like they knew that she wasn't receptive, but I don't know. So I've been watching Mossy, Mossy, Pinky, and okay yeah pinky's right there and i've been watching tootsie tootsie's over there with pinky i've been watching those three does because they were bred about three and a half weeks ago so they'd be about due to go back into season they have not shown signs of going back into season which is the usual like screaming or <laughs> the uh wagging of tails things like that so I don't know. Sky and Blackberry both came in here on Monday. Both were bred and now Blackberry's kind of acting like she's still in heat. But it's not uncommon for their hormones to do weird things just like it is for ours. Just like some women still cycle the whole time that they're pregnant. There's no reason for them to cycle. They can't be impregnated, but they still do. So Jeez, they're like just beating the tar out of one another down here. This always happens around breakfast, which is why I make it to where if a doe is beating on someone like that, like these two are, because they're pretty close in the social rung that when they're beating on each other, there's a couple piles that they can kind of rotate around to without getting beat too hard or pushed off a feed because these does are breeding or have already been bred and are now starting to develop a fetus. So I need to make sure that they're getting consistent, good nutrition. Nothing that will make them too fat, which is why they're mostly on hay. They're only getting a little bit of grain while they're in here because they're being bred and that's extra energy. A lot of these girls are getting ready to be moved out. So I'm probably going to give Mossy and Pinky until eh, maybe Monday or Tuesday. It's Saturday today. Um, so you guys are going to be seeing this delayed. You guys might not even see this till Friday, which will be a couple days after I move them. Because if they haven't cycled here in the next couple of days, then they're probably not going to cycle again and I'll just put them back over um, with the other girls and let them figure out their their social standings over there. Because even though these girls have been herded together um, at one time during the summer, the fact that we've taken some out and left some in, when they go back in, it'll be like reestablishing who's who in the pecking order all over again. It's not like they just remember, you know, 
Oh, hey, Pinky, I'm higher than you. You remember I'm higher than you. They don't know. They have to go over and they have to um, establish those social standings all over again. You guys can tell how much rain we got yesterday. That was empty. And they all think I'm bringing them grain now. But that was empty. You guys can see, like, that's how much water we got last night, yesterday, while it rained. So speaking of the dietary needs, I've seen something over here to this morning that wasn't here the other day, but it's here now. So I guess my goats are telling me I need to hay them more often, which they'll do, especially around this time when there's not a lot of forage. You guys can see, this is pretty much all grazed down to the dirt. And I don't really like that because it's been warm, cold, warm, cold. So our parasites probably haven't all been killed off in our soil yet. So they're out here grazing all the way down to dirt level because it's winter, there's no new growth but the parasites will still wake up when it gets warm. Um, so you can see behind me, I've got two trees that are giving me evidence that my girls need more fiber or they're bored during the day. It could be either, but I'm guessing it's going to be um, fiber. And this isn't bad for them to do. It's bad for the tree. Cause if you guys don't remember some of these trees over here behind me that are all cut down, they died because the goats, even with good forage in here would go and just rip the bark off and eat it and that's not bad because there's a lot of fiber there's a lot of nutrition that can be gained through barks it can be good for their digestive system too because it's so fibrous that it basically scrapes the insides of their intestines and it can help them get rid of worms um, whereas like grains pass through very softly well chewed hay from the rumen and into the digestive system is soft so it doesn't really do a good scraping job so you guys can see here i mean this going through their system really will scrape parasites which is good and there are a lot of people that use um, tree hay and um, tree fodder which really interests me because with using the chemical dewormers i have um, withdrawal times for both butchering animals along with milk consumption i can't even use the milk for soap or lotions because your skin's porous you'll just be sucking in those chemicals through the pores of your skin which isn't good for you that's why they say you shouldn't take the dewormers that you're giving your goats but this is going to be good for um, their intestinal system their gi tract and i will just make sure to give them a little bit more hay but that will change in here too because with some of these does not coming back into heat it means i can move them back to the doe pen which has got a lot more acreage and a lot more forage and we'll just be back down to only two bucks in here so yeah there are a couple things in here that i need to take care of but things just pile up sometimes in the winter too it rained all day long yesterday all day long a freezing rain and everything so it wasn't really a good day to be out here because, I mean, if you get sick, then you definitely can't take care of the farm. So you guys can see there on that tree as well. And these are both locust trees. Yeah. These are both locust trees. And they seem to prefer to do this to the locust trees. Um, not so much like our mulberry. So there's a mulberry tree, or which is our namesake, obviously. There's tons of mulberry trees here. But you guys can see right here, this is a mulberry tree that goes up and it's they have not touched the bark on that one that one and then we've got a couple of oaks and maple trees in here and they haven't touched that bark either so they just like the locust trees which is fine i mean they love locust tree um branches as well when we cut them and, and trim back so good morning tabitha how are you how's Coming tabitha back to you guys a couple days later but i figured we started this video on a very bright sunny morning doing some morning chores so we're going to end the video on a darker dreary night closing seriously hey dispute every single video in the background go back and watch the other videos you'll see she's always doing this with him hey stop so as i was saying i figured i would close us out on our nighttime chores which right now you guys can see behind me i've got Lots of chickens that were let out free ranging today, and I can't feed the goats. Oh, darkness falls. Uh, Jim, Django, stop it. You're a menace. So I figure I will take you guys along while I feed them first because I can't feed my goats when these guys are out. They literally will just crowd the feed bowls and push the goats off. 
And then they get stomped on sometimes, and that's not good either, so. Alright! Come on, the little cockroaches! The little cockroaches! Go on, be in there! Go in and get your food! Oh, you love it! Go on, chicken! Go on, lady! You were the last one yesterday. Oh my god, not this again. Seriously? Yes. Okay. <sighs> then we will close is it like this. One more thing that I'm going to do before I close with my evening chores is I've had a couple does in here, like we started off saying that we're getting ready to be moved out. So that was on Saturday. It's now Tuesday. Time for two of them to come out. So I'm going to go ahead and take Pinky right there and Mossy right there. I'm gonna take those two out because they have not come back into heat. But I am gonna leave Tiger, Blackberry, and Sky. Just because I'm waiting. Wait, who else is in there? Tootsie should be in there. Oh, she's over there screaming right there. So uh, actually I can take Tootsie, Mossy, and Pinky out because they haven't cycled again. So it means they probably caught. And I still have my teaser bug Poseidon in, so he'll tell me if anybody comes back into heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave some of the younger girls, AKA Tiger Lily and Sky, my last two to confirm bread, in with him to keep him company. Do we leave anybody else? I might leave Blackberry in there too. Cause he's literally, I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's just cause I'm out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these girls and when I say grab them means I've got a piece of twine over here that I'm going to use as a collar to uh, bring them in over here. I'm sure my ladies over here will be, um, they're already gathering, they know it's time for feed, but I want to move them over before I feed so like it's pretty cut and dry. Neighborino. That was a little tougher than I thought it would be. Got those does moved over. Let me go ahead and feed them really quick. Not in total darkness. It's kind of nice to have those does moved out now because these younger, further down on the uh, totem pole does, could definitely use the extra nutrition with less competition during feeding. Guys, I dislike being jumped on. I dislike being jumped on. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Let's go to this bowl. Aha. Trading it up. All right, guys. Thanks so much for being here with this one. I'm going to go ahead and feed these lovely ladies behind me. Call it a night. And I will catch you fine folks in the next episode. So, guys, thank you so much for being here with me today on Mulberry Branch Farm. I'm going to catch you in the next one. But remember to be safe out there and be kind to one another. I'll see ya. Okay, okay. No! Bill! Ah! Guys! Guy, come on now. Bill! Oh, don't jump on me. Please don't jump on me. Okay. Who pooped in the dinner plate? Who did that? Guys. Seriously, I can't flip it over if you're on it. Get off, Sunny. Sunny, get, get off it. Ugh. Ugh. This is ridiculous. All right. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably in the video. <laughs>